here's a nice example of getting some decking in included here. So we've got our two columns, right? Calculus, history, and then of course the therapy is our, our stub over here, therapy. And our therapy types and calculus history. But these two, what are they? They are one topic, the test topic. So inside our experiment, we were giving a test and we had two topics of the test, calculus and history. So this is a very clear example of using that deck effect. Okay, let's take a look at another example here. Number of textbook pages read for different academic participants in different locations. <clears throat> so we have our subjects here. We have our study location, which is going to be dorm, outdoors, lounge, and library. This is looking pretty good, actually. Study location, but we have different locations. That's clear. We have our subjects here, education, humanities, mathematics. So this looks very clear. What's the problem? We have a nice note here. Scores are mean number of pages completed and the subgroup N equals 20 per cell. So each cell has 20 participants. You know, a little bit hard to see what the problem here is. But if we look a little bit closely at the numbers, we can see what the problem is. And that is 6.6. .6. 3.0, and then suddenly 3.1416, or over here, 1.414. Well, of course, that's very strange. How is it that this number can have more decimal points than other numbers? How many decimal points should you have? It should be the power of your statistics. If you can measure up to the tenth decimal place or the hundredth, then the hundredth value, I mean, or the tenth value, then you should include it. In this case, they're just using one decimal place, one tenth. Probably not a big sample size, right? 20 per cell. So they don't have a whole lot of power. So the correct way is one decimal point, and you can see that in the example here. Now, of course, you have no way to know what their power is, but the key here would be consistency. Did they do it the same way every time? And so one decimal point is the same way every time. Let's take a look at another example. Agnostic behavior of the weekly electric fish. So some kind of fish that has electric power, right? So we have our decked example here. Social status. And social status has two parts, resident and intruder. That looks very good. Social behavior is the column heading here. And we've got these behaviors that the fish undergoes. And then we've got our numbers in here. How are they looking? Two decimal places. They all have two decimal places. That looks good. We've got some asterisks here, which is going to be our probability note, right? Ah, so here we can begin to see the example has a problem. Here is the word note, but actually what we've done here is a little bit strange. Two asterisks indicate P less than 0 0.01. One indicates P less than 0 0.05. Remember that we're going to put notes in an order, and probability goes at the last line, a separate line. So here you can see this is where it goes. Now, do we have a general note here? Do we have this? This note, no, there's no note here. We don't want to say anything. But we do have the A and B because A is explaining this A, B is explaining this B. So that's a line. And then we have probability, which is the last line. So remember to put them in the right order. Okay, so those are our examples. And it's really great to use examples, but it's hard for me to give you examples that work in every single case. The best thing is, again, to get an example of a paper that's the journal you're shooting for and to make sure you match exactly the way they do it. And I think you'll do much better then. Make sure you ask your professor how he wants to have it done or look for your department's rules and how they want it done. If you can't find rules, 
and find the APA and follow what they have and be consistent is the key part, being consistent. It's so easy to make a mess of tables and figures, so do your best.